welcome back to the 7000 my name is andrea and i'm the host of this podcast um and we are in the middle of a single series um which i'm really enjoying there's been a lot of great topics and there are a lot of things that i want to cover but the thing that i want to focus on for this week is something that i um i've experienced a couple of times in my lives <laughs> lives I only have one life. I better live it well. But something that I experienced multiple times in my life, which is the feeling of, I want to get my spark back. Um, With different seasons in life, your energy and your personality will kind of shift. And especially after a season of stress or maybe disappointment or even just a season of intense focus, you will feel very out of touch with yourself. And I think a lot of us have gone through that. Some of us are probably even going through that right now. And especially as girls, we can get really self-conscious about this, especially when we try to socialize again. It could feel very disheartening when it just feels like your smile's not the same, your laugh is not the same, your energy is not the same, your personality is not the same, so that's what I want to cover today. The first thing to keep in mind when when desiring to get your spark back is it won't come naturally at first. And what you really need to focus on, especially after a season of discouragement or disappointment, is mana for today. In seasons of my life when I would have when I would face disappointment, a lot of times I would compare myself to myself. I would obsessively reread old journals or watch old videos and I'm like, where is she? Um, and then I would have a great day, right? I would go to church or I'd hear a sermon and I'd be really pumped up. And then the next day I'd wake up disappointed again or um feeling like, what was that? That was just temporary. Instead of looking at it that way and trying to attain this constant level of high energy, don't underestimate the manna for today. When the children of Israel were walking around the wilderness, they were literally in the wilderness. And the wilderness can be symbolic of your circumstance, maybe your dry season, Uh, where you just feel like everything in your life is dry. And especially, like I said, in the context of this single series, especially after a season of disappointment, you will literally, not literally, but symbolically be in the desert. And God will give you encouragement for today. And then tomorrow he'll do it again. And then the next day he'll do it again and again and then again. Keep in mind that sometimes you are going day by day and... Instead of looking at this great big mountain that you have to climb, oh, I have to reach that point and I have to be this consistently on this consistent high, don't do that. Just take it day by day. Take it snippet of encouragement by snippet snippet of encouragement and you will see that God will provide through friends, through sermons, through songs, through your own devotional time, little pieces of manna that will give you energy and will give you strength for the next few days or moments and then he'll do it again trust that he'll do it again don't be discouraged sometimes we have this mental clock down um i don't even know if that made any sense is that even a word a mental clock down this mental countdown of oh you know by by next month i want to be like this great to have goals but then you start to panic when you're like wow it's already October and um, maybe I'm still discouraged or whatever it may be and Christmas is coming and I gotta cheer myself up and you know just take it day by day be graceful with yourself manna for today the second thing is filter out your social media I have a little bit of frustration because social media is such a ick not ick but like I have not even mixed feelings, just bad feelings about it for the most part. Sometimes I enjoy it because it's a great creative outlet and I, I love the creativity with it, but 
I plan on one day just deleting it forever and never, ever, ever, ever going back, ever, and just living the simple life. Like the song says, give me the simple life. That's the, that's the life I want. But if you are going to be on social media, which most of us are, be very careful what you interact with because it could get, it, you could get stuck down a rabbit hole. And I, my family makes fun of me all the time because I get stuck down the most rab, random rabbit holes. Like one day I got stuck down this like deep ocean rabbit hole where I was like watching videos of people swimming in the deep ocean and like petting sharks and things like that. <laughs> um, but other times maybe you're feeling kind of down you're maybe you've just gone through a breakup or maybe a, a door just closed in your life and then a video magically pops up on your feed that is exactly what you're going through kind of just validating your boohoo story and you'll like it or you'll send it to a friend and then the next thing you know your whole entire feed is just boohoo depressing videos with like emotional music in the background. What I did was I started, I don't think it was reporting, I forget what it's called, but you click the little three dots in the corner and then it, you say don't show me posts like this or something like that and you can even filter out like don't show me posts with the words blank. And then I remember I was just so fed up with the depressing feed that I literally went on the search bar and I typed funny videos and I just clicked on the most random ones and interacted with them just to change my algorithm and get me out of that social media rut. Which brings me to the third point which is spend less time obviously on social media and we all know this, we all know that that's a problem that a lot of us face. Uno momento. As I drink out of my favorite your dopamine, you are training your dopamine levels um, to have a very high threshold. I remember years ago talking to somebody and I was I, I randomly made this comment like, oh, it doesn't take a lot for me to have fun. I could have fun just carpooling with a friend down the freeway. Like my, I can have fun anywhere. And then like, really? Like for me, it kind of takes a lot. And I was always like, that's kind of weird. Like, why does it take a lot? And now I realize um, it takes a lot for all of us because our dopamine threshold is so high. I don't have the patience for it anymore at all. And it's because my dopamine has been trained to get these instant little hits. And I am I have been consciously training my brain to stop and to not scroll on Instagram anymore. And that's kind of why I want to focus more on uh, YouTube and Spotify making podcasts rather than um, having my social media be Instagram because I think that at least with podcasts and with YouTube, people are really sharing their heart and going deep. And also it's long form content rather than short form. I'm, I'm going on a tangent. But to return back to my original point, which is these little dopamine hits, these quick and fast dopamine hits, they will feel right for a second, especially if you're in a rut or, um, God forbid, if you're in a depression or in like a really sucky state of mind, they will boost your mentality for a few days, maybe a few weeks. But then instead of one um, baggage, you'll just replace it for another baggage, which is dopamine addiction. So don't do that to yourself. Spend less time on there and do other things. Um, which brings me to the third point, which is have a passion project. Do something that you're passionate about. And I know everybody talks about this, but nobody really takes it seriously because I remember when I was kind of in a rut, people would tell me that. And when you have no energy like that, Doing something passionate is like, I have no passion, this is my problem. But just try something new, something that you've always wanted to try. Um, try a podcast, it's really fun. <laughs> um, try gardening, try working out, get excited about something. Or maybe like an old hobby, like picking up the guitar or reading again, um, cooking. 
all those things are great things. And just get excited about something else and get out of your head. Okay, the next thing to keep in mind, what is this, 0.4, 0.5? The next thing to keep in mind is you are not trying to get back to your old self. It, it's kind of like graduating second grade and missing it being in third grade and being like, oh, I miss third grade so much. I'm going to work the entire year to go back to second grade. You're missing the whole point of all those tests you took. The reason why you went through the hard thing you went through is because God is working on version 2.0 of you. You are no longer the you that used to be. That person has graduated. Um, it really helped me to give myself some grace because I used to always compare myself to the younger version of me. And honestly, I don't want to be that version of myself anymore. It was fun for a phase, for a season. But now I'm on Andrea like 5.0 and... I do get moments like that and they're great and they're fun, but that's not my entire life and identity and I'm okay with that and I've embraced it and um, even like psychologically speaking, another tangent, I'm really into Myers-Briggs personality types. There are four letters if you know anything about this. If you don't, I highly recommend that you go and take the test because it's really fun. Um, but did you know that each of the four letters, I'm going to be really nerdy, but each of the functions they develop in different phases of your life. So your your primary function develops in your childhood. Your secondary function develops in early adolescence. Your territory function develops um, towards the end of, I think, your teenage years. And then your fourth function develops in your 20s and 30s. And that's why a lot of times in your 20s and 30s, you don't feel like yourself, by the way. Because your fourth function is the one that you are least good at. Anyway, you are developing different aspects of yourself because you've graduated that version. So instead of thinking, oh no, I lost myself, you actually didn't lose yourself. You are just further developing a different aspect to your personality and to your being. And yes, there are times, I understand what people are saying when they say, I've lost myself, I've lost my spark. But trust me, you will get the spark back. And it seems like you will, but believe me, in a few months or even a few years, you will. But there are some things that you have to do in order to get there. Um, and this brings me to my next point. Remove the things in your life that are causing you, that are dragging you down. And I'm not talking about cutting people off. Because... I briefly made a chatty podcast about this that I don't know if I will post or not. But basically, I just think people are so quick to cut people off, like just like left and right. And everyone's on the island. We're not made to be like that. We're made to be community. And as Christians, we're made to forgive 70 times 7. And even though sometimes you're not going to be restored to people, um, you shouldn't burn bridges completely. In certain cases, just don't ever look back, especially in, especially in the context of relationships. And that's a different topic. Well, not a different topic because we are on the topic of the Single series, but some people just don't waste your time having conversations with people that God delivered you from or that, you know, God told you not to date, not to be with. But what I'm saying here is remove the sources of things that are causing you to be weighed down. So... Maybe it is that you, um, now that, you know, let's go with this example, which is something ended. Um, remove people from your social media that God clearly showed you you're not supposed to be with. And I'm, of course, talking about dating now. I'm not talking about friendships. Friendships handle that differently, and there will be a different podcast on that someday. Not today. But just, if you keep seeing especially if there were feelings involved, don't keep um, giving your opportunity, yourself an opportunity for pity parties whenever you see people um, so that you can be dragged into your sentimental side and be stuck somewhere you shouldn't be. 
give yourself what you need in order to move forward. And maybe that even means taking a break from going to certain places or hanging out with certain groups of people. And I'm so weary of saying that because, again, I'm afraid that people will take that from one context to another. I'm specifically talking about relationships that have ended. The thing that is dragging you down, you need to distance yourself. And I think what it comes down to really is acceptance. You need to accept the changes that came into your life um, and get to the root of why you're feeling this way, why you're feeling in a rut, or why maybe you kind of lost your spark. It's very important to go back in time, but don't don't replay and go overanalyzing or else you will lose your marbles. But get to the root of what made you feel that way. Get deliverance from it. Um, pray about it. Surrender it to God. And then don't look back. There was a sermon that was talking about the verse that says, cast all your anxieties upon him because he cares for you. You're not supposed to throw your anxiety to God and then go back and pick it up again and then throw it and then pick it up. Just throw it and be gone. Like turn around and don't look back. There was a sermon, book, podcast, video, something um, that was talking about Nehemiah. He was rebuilding the city and it's symbolic to how you're rebuilding yourself right now at one point I could never pronounce the guy's name uh, Sambalat something like that anyway one of those guys the bad guys that is really against this whole project um, sends him a letter and basically makes them feel inferior. I forget what the contents of the letter were, but I think they were threatening them. Um, and it says that he read the letter and then he went, he went to the temple to worship and then went back to building or something like that. And what the sermon was saying was he read it once and then ran to God. He didn't read it once, run to God, go back, reread it, analyze, oh, look at the tone that he used and look at all these different threats and let's make a game plan and let's journal about every single aspect. No, don't keep replaying the scenes in your head that caused you the hurt, the pain, the disappointment, the whatever snuffed out your spark. Um, just don't keep rereading over and over so remove anything from your life that is from the enemy and by from the enemy i mean things that just bring you down um and the devil is using as spiritual attacks so maybe this means removing things from your house that remind you of people that are no longer supposed to be in your life romantically or maybe this means deleting some pictures it, i hope you're deleting all of your text messages, your photos, contacts that you don't need to have anymore. Just declutter. De Mar Marie Kondo your mind from closed doors. Leave closed doors behind for good. And just, it no longer sparks joy in your heart. So just toss it. Um, and then after you do that, be very conscious of what you're feeding your mind. So instead of listening to sob, sad music, listen to positive music. I remember there was a point in my life where certain doors closed and I started, I created this playlist, Brighter Days, I think I called it, whatever, you know, but even like my, my work login password, it changes like every couple of months or weeks. And it's so funny because I, I'm i totally going to expose this right now. I always choose a password that reflects the season of life that I'm in. So I I think at one point it was literally like, here comes the comeback. You know that song by Danny Belkey, here comes the comeback? I made that my password, but kind of like as a reminder. And every day I would write that as a password. And relax because I didn't tell you any of the punctuations or numbers or capitalization that went along with my password. So no, you do not know my password. Um, but just even the act of like typing that out, like change your wallpaper, change everything. Like 
literally make it a new season in your life. Like, acknowledge, you know what? I'm at a new chapter. Change things around you to kind of signify to your brain that I am now in a new season. God's doing something new and the old is gone. Um, and even if, you know, your sadness may not be due to a heartbreak or a situationship end or, you know, romantic failure, it may be due to something else, whatever you may be in. I still recommend these same steps to you. Just change things in your in your home. Maybe even like switch your furniture around a little bit, which sounds like such a girl thing to say, but it helps. Buy yourself a plant. Do do new things and make it so that it your brain is very conscious that you are in a new season. Um, and so instead, by doing this, this brings me to my last point, which is instead, because think about it, when you were your old you, were you really like consciously building yourself? Like, oh, this is the me that I want to be? No, you were just going along with the flow and you happened to be in a good place. So do it again. Instead of looking back like, oh, I wish I was that version of myself. Instead, look to the future and get excited about the present and embrace your season. Like, this is this is Andrea 5.0. I hope this was encouraging to you. And don't worry, you will get your fight back. So just, just change your mind mindset with little steps. But these little steps can really go a long way. And I promise you, take it from me, you will get your, maybe not the same version of you back, but you will get a spark back. You will get um, your comeback. Um, so yeah, if this was encouraging with you, share it with a friend and follow me on Spotify and YouTube, Spotify or YouTube, whatever you choose. Um, to keep up with any podcast that I may have in the future. And also, um, I may not post my... I, so far, I've been posting new reels and new, new reels each week to announce new episodes. But just know, a new episode is coming every week. So keep your eye out for that. And I'll see you next time.